pulling into Key West. <laughs> Look at the map, you can't go any more south than we are, right about the end. Back down here fishing with Pepe, one of my old friends. The weather's questionable, it's February in Florida, cold fronts are coming in. We got one coming in in the next couple days. We got rain, we got wind, but you know what? It's Key West and there's fish here. Whether it's tarpon or getting out into the Gulf for, for bottom fishing or tuna, we're gonna make something happen. I've already talked to Pepe, he's got multiple plans lined up. We're gonna make the best of this one. <laughs> 85 degrees it's supposed to be today in February. It's not really winter time. Not really winter time. And that's what it takes to get a bite with tarpon. Usually my, my rule of thumb is the water has to be 75 degrees and above for right. me to even try it. But when you got 80, 80 degree water, 8. yeah. Yeah, it's... they're gonna be there. They're the migrating tarpon are here already, so I think we can get them to chew today. The funny thing is is I've never, I don't think I've ever caught a tarpon in the keys. This really? place is synonymous with tarpon fishing and it is it is if there's a fish that uh it put this place on the map yes sir it's a tarpon it is and, uh, yeah yeah well maybe i can change that around for you today i'm excited let's do it let's do it let's roll key west it's the end of the road you can't go any further as far as south as you can get it's split by the atlantic ocean and the gulf of mexico which is a prime location for some of the best fishing, diving, anything that you know involves water, this is the place to be. What you're saying, arrive on vacation? Leave on probation, it's the Key West motto. Bait is clutch wherever you go. Tarpon tend to be pretty specific on their diet, depending on their location, their, what they're foraging for. And Pepe said, you know, it's key. These, these tarpon want, you know, live bait. It's nice to be able to go to an area and to throw artificials, but, you know, during the middle of the day with the warmer waters, you're just not gonna get the bites, unfortunately. Well, there's some good ones in there, Pepe. Most mornings start by getting the cast net out, throwing and, and loading the wells up, whether it's with, you know, white baits or you know, traditional scale sardines or, or sandy key pilchards, which they call here, or, or pinfish. You know, live bait is definitely a necessity. Yeah, there's a lot of fish in here. You can see them right there. I, I said we're on station right here. Don't get no better than this. And we got here at a good time. We got the incoming tide all day, which is the good tide. Once it gets out going, the uh, chances are gone. We're just freelining them? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, we got very little tide right now, so yeah, we're gonna freeline them. But eventually, uh, when the tide picks up a little bit, what we do is uh, put um, some little split shots on it, and it gives it, gives it an edge. Fish on, fish on. Right one? Yeah, I just, uh, it, it may be, maybe just a small one, but yeah, I think it is. I think we got the right one right here. Does not even know he's hooked? Uh, he doesn't know yet, but he's about to jump. He's coming up. Nice fish, perfect size. Good job. Yeah, Pepe. baby. That didn't take you long. You no, know, sir. Well, you know. <laughs> right into the chum. It's like cooking, George. You gotta have the right recipe. You, you give them what they want. I'm fishing oh, yeah, on baby. credit. A macro got you. With the warm water and the warm weather, it turns the tarpon on. Maybe it's a little early season, but again, these things are triggered by water temperature and air temperature. So the water temperature is raised up into the 80s. Talking with Pepe, you know, traditionally it's not always you know, a great time to be tarpon fishing here, but with such warm waters, the bike can be really good. Ooh. 
Real and steel. That fish never been hooked before. When I put, first put the hook on, he was like, what the hell is this? You can tell when they've been hooked before. Coming up, coming up, coming up, fellas. Nice. Perfect on that tackle right there you got. It is, I just, I just love all this new tackle, you know? So light. People are like, wait a minute, you're gonna catch a, you're gonna catch a tarpon on that run? I'm like, man, you won't believe the drag on these reels. You don't need anything more than that. You really don't, and you know, especially when you're fishing out here all day, you don't want to have some heavy, heavy uh, tackle on you all day. You just got to have the right tackle. It's a morning workout. God, we were here for 10 minutes. Right outside of where we were. Rather be lucky than good, right? Mallory George? Square is right over there, right, isn't it? Yeah, Mallory Square. We're about, we're about a half mile, maybe a mile from Mallory Square. And we found a nice biomass of fish right here, just hanging out. We got the right, <laughs> we got the right bait. The right tide, the right tackle, and the right location. Yes sir. yes, sir. 40 pound leader, that's the thing too, he says, and this water's clear. Yeah. Yeah, I got clients of mine that fish them in Louisiana with 100 pound test and everything. I was like, I wish, man. We gotta do everything we can to make it invisible down here in the Florida Keys. Clean water. Yeah. There's some disadvantages to it. Yes, sir. You just tackle back. That's that 40 fluoro, top knot fluoro from your Zuri. That's just all you need. Like you said, people think you need so much more. That and just a 6-0 trocar circle hook, pretty basic. Just right in the button, right in the corner of the mouth. That's going to be a sick shot right there. <laughs> thing almost ate me. That one almost pounded you upside the head. I've been hit by him before. It ain't pretty. There he is, served on the platter. Right in the yeah. button. Right in the button. This is the money fish right here. You know, here. George, I, you know, if you look at our track record, we always get pretty lucky with you. When I was young, young and dumb, I used to take a lot of risks, not anymore. I got children to race. That's it. I love these circle hooks for, for tarpon fishing. These troll cars are incredible. Look at the green and blue on his head. It's iridescent. Yeah. Look at that. Gorgeous fish, ain't nothing like him. Just a giant thread fin. Look at the thread on his back of his tail here. Yeah. Woo! I tell you what, I ain't got another one like that on me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. Look one at and done, Bubba. <laughs> I'm soaked. I think when most people think of tarpon fishing, they do think of the Keys. It's one of those iconic places that has such a rich history in, in tarpon fishing that it pretty much put this place on the map. You come down here and it's, it's one of the most targeted species for anybody that comes down here that wants to, to fish in the, in the shallow water. Fish! Oh yeah, little one. He boiled on it, man. That was a great eat. <laughs> it's a little juvenile. Oh yeah, man, that's how I like them. Ah. <sighs> I saw him coming up and I was couldn't get enough bend in the rod. Oh. When you're live baiting for tarpon, you really don't know what you're gonna get. You gotta remember, you're out in the middle of the ocean practically, you know, sitting on this rock, and you have your bait out there, not only are tarpon swimming by, but so many other, so many other different types of fish, whether it's you know, snapper, or sharks, or barracuda, whatever it is. Um, but the funny thing is, a lot of those fish that are bycatch are excellent eating. We're gonna bread them. We're gonna put them in a nice tortilla with some pico de gallo. You know, a few more fixings, some beans and rice, and down the hatch he goes. So one of the benefits of uh, tarpon fishing here is the amount of uh, uh, bycatch that you can get, you know what I mean? We get a lot of mackerels, we get a lot of different types of uh, snappers, we get cobias. It's a nice thing at the end of the day, you know, being able to fillet a couple of these fish and go into the 
one of the many local eateries and they'll cook them up for us. You got a spot for us for tonight? I got one that is uh, the best right now. All right. And, uh, you're well, gonna, I think you're going to be Last impressed. time we were here, we experienced a local cuisine of Key West. I'm excited to try something different. We got some variety of snapper. Yeah. Dinner and a show. We got our tarpon. That's I put it. one a couple, one or two in the air and you landed one. And got we got lucky, some food. Got lucky right off the bat. <laughs> well, you know what? Weather's rolling in. We got the best of it there, a couple hours of it. We'll head in now, rest up a bit, and then tomorrow morning, you know, get back on them. Roger that, siesta time. Doesn't matter where you go in Key West, or this vicinity, there's tarpon everywhere. We had a unique opportunity to see, you know, these shrimp boats coming in, unloading their catch, you, you, you know, taking them right to the scale, you know, they're chilling them down, freezing them, or freshly providing them to local restaurants right there at the dock. There's not many places that you can go where you can see the boats unloading, and in this case, the shrimp boats unloading their catch and literally carrying that catch right into a restaurant. Hogfish is one of those destinations that you just have to come to when you're here. It's out on Stock Island, uh, which is a little bit away from you know, downtown of, of Key West. It's a little more laid back. And really, talking to the owner, he says, this is what all of Key West used to be like before it really blew up into what it is today. So it's a nice opportunity to, to get away from the hustle and bustle of the downtown grind of Key West and, and just kick back, enjoy a great dinner and some great drinks. We had caught some great snapper out while we were tarpon fishing and we had the plan to bring them to the restaurant. We're gonna bring them to hogfish and you know, the idea was for them to cook our catch. And there's a lot of restaurants that you can go to in these areas where you can bring your catch and they will prepare it for you. And that's a great thing. Again, fresh seafood right off of your boat, prepared whatever way you want it. And uh, it was just a, a unique, cool experience to do it. The food was absolutely incredible, cooked many different ways. Dinner and show. Dinner. Snapper. Snapper sliders. Oh my god. We're getting better than that. Key West is known for its nightlife, its bars, and its restaurant, and there is one central place to do that, and that is Duval Street. The rich history of, of bars that have been here back from the Hemingway days, and um, this is where everything happens. The nightlife here is incredible, the restaurants, like I said, are incredible, the bars are incredible, so we've spent some time down here. Uh, we're going to do it a little different this time, we're going to rip around on the one wheels, which is a great way just to see this whole place. and. Uh, just get out with the guys and have a good time. I'm rolling down Duval. I'm thinking to myself, what better way to pay tribute to Pepe than to get a tattoo that says Pepe? I have to do it. I mean, I have. I mean, he's like a brother to me. I love the guy. Hopefully, this Perfect. tattoo doesn't last more than a week. I'm getting it. Well, now, now I just don't know where to get it. Location is key. Things got a little wild, a little crazy. Temporary tattoo. It's not permanent. If, you know, I don't have tattoos. I didn't. I thought, what better way to pay homage to my good friend Pepe than to get a tattoo with his name on? It? We really did it as a joke, and I thought it was only gonna last for a week or so, but it ends up, I think it lasts for four weeks, so. The more washing you do, the quicker it comes off, so I'm gonna be washing it quite a bit when I get home. What do you think, Georgie? Woo! Listen, if you come to Key West, you gotta get tatted up. I mean, it's the least you can do. You come here on spring break, whatever it is, vacation. You go home with a tattoo, mom, dad. They're gonna be a little upset, but you know what? Two weeks, it washes away. Four weeks, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I've used Ray Marine Electronics for years for a couple of reasons. High quality product and real ease of use. 
So I run two Axiom Pro's 12-inch multifunction displays. I love the, the dual screens. Um, I split those screens up. You can split these screens up whatever way you like. I love to have my instruments displayed on here. I can see exactly what the Verado is doing at all times. And then I have my, my Navionics chip in here, my chart. In addition to that, I have Sirius XM weather uh, overlays. So smaller boat, if I don't have radar, quick tap of the button, I can see what the local weather is doing, follow storms, look for lightning in, in the summertime. The other one I'll run split, I'll have my bottom machine. And I run multiple transducers. I have a shallow water transducer for shallower waters with chirp. And then I have a deep water. I have a 1KW for, let's say I'm out sword fishing. I want to be able to see that deep bottom, you know, up to a couple thousand feet. The 1KW will do that for me. In addition to that, I'm going to have side vision. A lot of applications, especially when we're inshore snook fishing, tarpon fishing, that side vision works out perfectly for me. And then I have my cameras. I have two cameras. I have FLIR, forward-looking infrared for night, thermal vision in low light conditions, perfect. And I also have augmented reality. What that will do is give me an overlay of navigational markers. Any AIS registered vessels will pop up there as well. So pretty much the same setup I normally have. The only thing I'll kind of switch through is the bottom machine. I'll change transducers with the ease of a couple buttons. I can switch through different transducers for different applications. What I also like to run is the autopilot. Something that probably years ago we would have thought was overkill on small boats. I'm telling you, this is one thing I would never do without is autopilot. Just to click on the button on the map and hit go to, hands free, it's gonna take me there. So when considering electronics for your new boat or your existing boat, make sure you check out Ray Marine's fullest line at a local retailer nearest you. Day two, back at them. We know where they're at. We know what they're eating. We know where the bait's at. I've put a couple in the air, you released one. Great night last night, that food was incredible. It was, and, and uh, the margaritas were, uh, the margaritas are talking back to me right now. Got a little, <laughs> got a little bit of a, uh, a little foggy this morning. Yeah, just a little fog. Well, I gotta morning. tell you, we went to back out downtown last night, and uh, it was one of those nights. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He was do that too. Well, I have something to show you. You know, oh, you're yeah. one of my. I, I feel like we're close. Okay. Like, you're, like okay. you're a brother. Okay. And I wanted to really solidify that. Okay. And for you to know my commitment to you. Look at this. Oh man, that is that is beautiful right there. It it would have been so much better if you put in your buttocks though. <laughs> we were going that to is pretty. That is pretty. To put it. That is pretty. I like it. I love it. <laughs> you should have seen the look on the guy's face when he I told him what we wanted. <laughs> oh good Lord Almighty. I like it. I like it. Who loves you the most? <laughs> I get tatted up with like Pepe it. on I, my arm. I like it, I like it. <laughs> Thank God it wash comes off in two weeks. It's actually four weeks, George. Is it? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one, dude. That's the one. It's on like Donkey Kong. Nice and easy. No, it ain't him. It ain't him? Nah, it's something else. You got a nice bar jack, dude. That thing is huge. If that's a bar jack, that thing is that's huge. That's a bar jack. Jeez, Pepe, they get this big? Yeah, they get bigger than that. I've shot them bigger. That's good eating right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got them. I know. Wow, that Ooh, that's, a, that's a beauty, look at that, look at that in the light. That's a, that's a beautiful fish, that's a big, beautiful bar jack, they're delicious eating. That's funny, I've yeah. never seen one that big, I didn't realize they got yeah, that they big. Yeah, they school around here, when you catch one, there's usually more around. It's one of the many bycatches here, tarpon fishing in the harbor. <laughs> It's crazy, you're tarpon fishing, you don't know what it. you're gonna get. Yeah, you never know, I mean, you're chumming, you're live baiting, you know? And uh, God, that truck got right sunk in the corner of his mouth. And they're strong fish, as you can tell. They'll give you a hell of a fight. Beautiful, beautiful. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
It is February, the water temperature is 80 degrees, and the Keys is not only known for its fishing, great fishing, inshore, offshore fishing, but also its diving as well, and its lobstering. Lobster season is open right now, it opens uh, in August, all the way through March in Florida, so Pepe's gonna put us on a little, little spot here, drop down, let's see what kind of life is here, and you guys can see, you know, what the underwater in this area has to hold. We're sitting in the Gulf right now, we're not even out in the Atlantic, but uh, definitely known for their lobster, so let's go down and check them out. The Florida Keys are known for its clear water, ton of structure and habitat, and that's perfect for the Florida spiny lobster. And this is the place to come and get them. It's probably one of the biggest seafood industries in this area. Uh, more lobster come out of the state of Florida in the Florida Keys than any other place. And, you know, it's such a destination for recreational uh, divers as well, whether you're free diving or snorkeling or, or scuba diving, you know, part of the year, this area comes alive with people that are just here for the sole purpose of catching spiny lobster. Key West is always a great destination to come, to be able to, to get down here, to see Pepe, hang out with him, um, to experience the fishery, the, and everything that Key West has to offer. Florida Keys, it's open. Come on down. What does Pepe say? Arrive on vacation, leave on probation. That's not us. We, cannot, we have nobody to bail us out. <laughs>